Well, hello and welcome. Well, as we know and have heard in the media over the last sort of five to six years in particular, there has been a substantial increase in screen time and internet usage by children under nine years of age. And we've covered a lot of this um, here at Kiddypedia, I guess the pros and cons of this situation. Um, but, you know, with regards to, I guess, increased screen time usage, no one really could have predicted what we've, what we've been through and are continuing to go through with COVID-19. And uh, I guess the whole stay at home era has forced us to stay in and to stay safe. Um, but internet usage, if anything, has really been a savior, uh, really in keeping us connected where we have really been physically segregated. Um, you know, it's enabled children to stay educated through distant learning and to stay connected with their friends and their family and stay entertained through gaming and streaming services and all that sort of stuff. But um, it's also enabled another demographic with opportunities and that being online predators. And this has really raised safety risks for millions of children around the world, especially here in Australia. So spending more time on virtual platforms uh, can leave children vulnerable to online predators. And um, in general, keeping kids safe and online is not a simple task. And I, I guess every parent would know that. Um, and it really takes time and effort and therefore a number of steps are really involved. Involved. So to help navigate our way through this um, and our new reality, we're joined today by our special guest, um, Michelle Derrick, author of a highly successful protective behaviours picture book, um, Only For Me. Now, Michelle is a child protection advocate and a stay-at-home mum to four children aged from five to 15. And she's also one of our um, partners here at Kittypedia. Now, Michelle's book, Only For Me, is a gentle rhyming book which teaches young children that their body is private and that they have the right to protect their their privacy and since its release in July 2016 and I bet any money Michelle you would think that's just flown since then <laughs> but it it's has. now <laughs> sold over 13,000 copies which is astronomical um, and they've been sold not only here in Australia but across the globe uh, to critical acclaim by parents, educators, uh, teachers and child protection organisations. Thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. Thanks, Rach. It's an absolute pleasure to be back here again. It's been a little while since we last chatted. I know, but here we are and um, in, a, in a very different world also at the moment too. Um, and, you know, more Absolutely. so than anything, I guess the, the concerns that we're sort of facing at the moment are um, a little bit more concerning, I think, given the amount of time that kids are uh, and have been spending time in lockdown. Now, you've been an expert in this space now for many years, um, but I'd love to know, you know, what changes have you really experienced, if any, I guess, but I'd love to know, um, since we went into lockdown, now that we're on the other side of it a little bit more so, but I just want to know what sort of changes did you see during that period when we were really sort of told to sort of stay indoors? Well, sure, Rach. I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious that, that, um, as you said, we relied on technology to um, to connect us with the outside world, whether that was, you know, through work, for education, for our kids, um, but also just staying connected with each other, um, particularly even, you know, something that a few months ago we would never have dreamt of in some families to sort of Skype um, men who might just live, you know, a few blocks away, um, all of a sudden became um, a real tool for people to stay connected with their loved ones um, and so I think we as parents made different decisions um, than what we would have aut uh, normally made um, had it not been for, for COVID. So I'll just give you a little example. I had, um, we've, you know, tried to restrict the, um, the number of um, social network um, platforms that my older girls access. Um, but during this time, um, one of my daughters came to me and said that all of her friends were staying connected on a particular platform, which we previously said no to. So because we're looking at, obviously, at such a unique situation, I, I caved and I said, okay, because I didn't want her, you know, we're worried about keeping the whole person healthy and mental health wise and wanting them to stay connected. I made a decision that I wouldn't have automatically or normally made. And so I said, yes, she could have this platform with conditions. Um, so, and I, I would imagine that that has been um, quite a common thing for families um, where they would, you know, have probably been a little bit more generous in terms of, um, 
responding to their kids' requests when it comes to technology yes. and social media. Um, even with my five-year-old, he uh, started kindy this year and even within the, think, seven weeks he was there, he, he, he made a little best mate and he was desperate. And I guess having older siblings, he wanted to, he saw the fact that they could connect online. So he wanted me to organise a, a FaceTime uh, with, with, his, with his mate, which we did do. So I just think we were really interacting with technology in a way that we never had before and making decisions that I wonder now, whether they'll become the new norm. Mm -hmm. um, so where we've actually given permission to our kids to maybe access different um, platforms or apps um, because of COVID, are we, many of us, going to actually then wind those back? I'm not really confident there because I know probably as a mum, I know it'll be very tricky for me to do that with my own children. So I think, yeah, we're really... Um, we're in a world right now probably where we've never relied on and accessed technology um, so much before. Yeah, and it really did help um, and is continuing to help children, I guess, sort of stay in touch with their friends, but just to reduce some form of their own anxiety, I think, in feeling like they're missing out. Uh, it was a lot for them to take on board and, and to digest, you know, mentally to understand that they couldn't sure. see their friends and they couldn't do all these things. But, you know, yep. um, yeah, but like in your opinion, like why do you think, online safety is more important than ever before like what's your thoughts on that well i just think um obviously the fact that we're where our kids are accessing technology um more frequently mm -hmm. um the range of technologies that they're that they're accessing is on the increase um and it's it's at such a rate that it's actually mind-blowing so in um this century you would expect that the rate of technology technological advancement would be around about 100 years. But at the current rate that technology is advancing, it's actually more like 20,000 years what? worth of technological advancement in, in, in this century. That is, if it continues at the current rate that technology is changing, we will see 20,000 years worth of advancement just in this one century, in the 21st century. So I'm just trying to just so, have that sort of sink in. That's crazy. It is crazy. It is um, really very hard to comprehend. Um, but it really illustrates to us that this is something that um, as parents and carers we have to get on board with because it's not going anywhere and it's actually going to, to get trickier and harder and it's going to be an issue that, um, you know, we will be adapting to probably for the rest of our lives. Yeah, and it's just the pace that it's sort of moving in. And, and as you were just saying, the whole thing also is the fact that there are a lot of opportunistic people out there. Um, there's something I just want to bring up for them for a moment, really, which is which is the dark web, which um, is some something and somewhere I guess where predators can exchange information. Now, for someone who doesn't know what the what the dark web actually is, can you quickly explain what it is? Yeah, so um, it's it's another layer of the web where um, people can exchange information um, without tracing, without that being traced. Yeah. So um, it's an ideal um, environment for predators to actually um, exchange information. Um, and what actually sort of prompted this article for me was when um, the major networks um, revealed to us that there was actually a, a handbook circulating the dark web that was actually someone had specifically created it to help other predators um, in their efforts to um, target young children um, online during the COVID mm. lockdown. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even though I'm very aware of the fact that these things exist in um, the work that I do, just hearing that, that, that it had been specifically designed to take advantage of vulnerable kids during a worldwide pandemic just made my blood boil. Um, I, was, I was just so furious that, that, um, yeah. that they would, you know, I mean, that they would prey on, on innocent children, but just that they would share this information with each other yeah. and actually encourage each other um, to use this. Um, opportunity to to target kids yeah um, so, so, so the, yeah so it was it was hearing that that just made me go you know what this is this is a topic that we we can't re revisit often enough 
yep. because I know we've covered it. You know, you've, I'm sure there's been lots of different articles and focusing on different things through Kittypedia and through, you know, we, we often hear about it in our schools and preschools. We're often being reminded about it, but I really cannot say it strongly enough that it is, um, we, we, can't, we can't revisit it too often yep. because it really is um, a concern. Agreed. Agreed. So, so just to elaborate a little bit further, for anyone that maybe hasn't heard of the dark web before, the dark web is a part of the internet that isn't visible to search engines and requires a use of like an, an anonymous browser um, called Tor to be accessed. Um, and the dark internet is really used for um, illegal activities such as illegal trade, forums, media exchange, um, as you just said, media exchange for pedophiles and terrorists. So, um, and you know, which we'll speak about it in a, in a moment, but the whole reason we're bringing this whole thing up is just so parents are, are, are aware that it's out there. Um, it's obviously something that, that Joe Public doesn't know about, but we just need to bring bring it up in, 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 this, in this type of discussion about online activity for children. Um, and is there anything else? I mean, you mentioned that this is not the first sort of handbook that would have been circulated on something like that before as well, which is pretty disappointing, hey? Yeah. Yeah, I think for the for the average um, person that you know, it it's something that it's it's not even on your radar. Um, but yeah. and and it's something that I don't really particularly want to focus on. No, but no. I think it's important it's the fact that we do. The, the fact these predators are taking advantage advantage I know. of your children during yeah. the pandemic is is what yeah. you're alluding but to. So as I much totally... as we don't want to, I think it's important. Yeah, that we we bring it to light. Yeah. Um, and then we we bring. I guess for me, it was as an advocate for for child protection. It just awakened in me um, that. Um, desire to do something to counteract the fact that this handbook was circulating the dark yeah. web. So as a disclaimer, this is just um, more so, so parents are aware that it's real, it exists, and I guess to be equipped with expert information and advice to help them protect their kids at all times, really, that's the whole reason we've brought it up, hey? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So we published your article, the ABC to keep keeping our kids safe during the COVID um, lockdown. For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview and tell us what inspired you to write it? Yeah, sure. So I think the whole, um, you know, topic, I guess it depends um, maybe what generation you, you're, you're in, but for me, I certainly didn't grow up with an iPhone. Um, and um, I, was, I think I was out of school by the time we, we'd even heard of the internet. Um, so I think for some of us, um, in particular as parents, it's, it, it still can be really overwhelming. Mm. Um, and I wanted to, to sort of break it down um, so, that, so that parents could really be um, aware of the different areas that we need to look at. So within each area, um, there are lots of different things that we can do. So I decided to frame it as the ABC um, mm -hmm. and that was simply just so that it's an easy reference for parents when they're thinking about this topic to think, have I covered these different areas? So could you tell us a little so, bit more what these ABCs are? <laughs> yeah. So, so for A, it's all about awareness, being aware of what your kids are up to. And I really feel for parents in this generation because it is completely new. It is not something that we, um, you know, often your parenting um, skills are part of um, what has been handed down to you and the way that your parents interacted um, with you as a child. But this didn't exist. And yep. so we've got no reference to go by. We're really, um, you know, this is something that we, the only way that we can go forward is by educating ourselves about it. True. So um, so number one, awareness. So we want, need to be aware of exactly what our kids are doing. What, um, what are the ways that they're accessing technology? And specifically, what, how do those... Um, how do those different apps or um, social media networks or toys, how do they actually, um, how is your child interacting with those? So it's really about educating yourself um, as to exactly what they're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once again, as a mum of four, I know how hard that is, particularly because I have such a range of ages and the way that they're interacting with technology is very different from my five-year-old versus my 15-year-old. Of course. Um, but you really have to take that time out to be aware of what's going on in your 
in your kid's technological journey, I guess. Mm. Um, so we need to do that by having conversations with our kids. Um, we need to, just like with um, Only For Me, we talk about empowering and educating our kids about body safety. Well, this is, this is um, a very, um, well, this, that element isn't um, really covered in the book, but this is something that um, we have just as much responsibility to um, educate our kids about. So it's about being specific once again and telling them, well, these are the sort of dangers um, that can exist. And of course, once again, it's in an age appropriate way, but it's about letting them know that they are, there are predators out there, just like we'll, you know, um, um, warn them about stranger danger and the fact that somebody could come up to them in a park. It's exactly the same. We need mm -hmm. to specifically tell them, well, this is what someone might do. And they, they might try and contact you through um, a game or a social media network or whatever, whatever how, however they're interacting with technology and that messaging feature is available. Um, but, the, yeah, the, the point is that, that, um, that they will contact you um, and potentially ask for inappropriate um, material um, and and also warning your kids that that they're more likely to appear as another child, um, that they're not going to be introducing themselves as a 47 year old male. That telling your your children that it, that you might think that they're another little boy or another little girl, and that's the problem. But because we we don't really know who we're talking to when we're talking to someone online, that um, that you know, unfortunately, it could be could be a bad person. Yes. So we really want to specifically educate them about those dangers so that they're able to identify um, any sort of inappropriate contact. Um, and then we've got also um, the fact that um, they could inadvertently become a, come across inappropriate contact. So you've got, you've got the dangers of pedophiles or, or predators. You've got the fact that they could inadvertently come across inappropriate content um, where the controls aren't necessarily in place. So for mm -hmm. instance, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit more a bit later, but you know, accessing pornography, they may not necessarily have gone out to access that and it may not be a deliberate thing. Um, but if things pop up that they know, once again, by talking to them, you know, and seeing anyone, you know, in naked pictures or being really specific with them, particularly with your little ones, and we do cover that that section of it in Only For Me, um, letting them know that that's not okay and you need to come and tell mum or dad or whoever their, their trusted person is if, if anything like that popped up on the computer. Um, and I guess probably less so with our little ones, um, but I would imagine it's at an increasingly younger age, but we've got the, the cyberbullying issue as well mm -hmm. so we want to keep them safe from from all of those um all of those things so we need to be aware so we need to talk to them we need to make them aware it's about our awareness but it's also about theirs yeah um, and then we have to follow through and that's where it gets tricky um with just the pace of life um and all the different things that we have to worry about as parents but you do have to monitor what your kids are doing and i for one, can say that there are times when I haven't done this correctly. Um, and thank God that hasn't, you know, as far as I know, um, my kids have continued to, to stay safe. But I certainly know that there are times where I just think, okay, I really have not been doing a good job um, in that area. So, um, you know, I'm not here to say it's easy because I know it's not. Um, just because we, you know, we have so many different things to, to worry about as parents. Um, and it, it's also, I think, um, you know, it's about the, the taking the time and effort to actually learn like the games and how, what, so, you know, my 10 year old, um, you know, the different games that he loves playing. Well, what opportunities are there in those games for people to connect? Can other people um, message him, for instance? So you really, once again, have to educate yourself about how, how is your child interacting with that technology? Mm -hmm. So it's all about, yeah, that, that awareness. Um, so that's that's kind of the the way of thinking about making our kids aware and us as parents being aware, and then you move on to what I called the bees, which was was boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think you know it's it is really tricky when you have kids that make you feel like you're the big bad parent 
Um, but we have to stay strong as parents because despite what other parents might be doing, um, it is really important that you set those boundaries for your child um, and that you don't just go along with the tide and, and in some cases, I know it, it does, it, it's actually the truth when my kids say, but mum, everyone else is doing this. Um, but so it's really important to really stay strong in those moments because I can guarantee you it's not everybody, but certainly there would be cases of other children sort of being able to, um, for instance, hop onto social media before the age, um, the specified age. I know that that's been a big, a big one for my um, teenage girls. Um, and um, so, um, sorry, I've just lost my train of thought. Um, Talking about the boundaries, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the, the dog's just trying to get out of the, uh, That's <laughs> the door. Okay. okay, someone's <laughs> let him out. Um, so, yeah, so it's, a, it's about enforcing those boundaries. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, being, being the tough parent um, because, you know, if you just – give in then you're actually um you you're potentially hurting your child at in that moment you might feel better because you're agreeing to whatever it is that they want you know that they're they're asking access to but in the long run you're actually being the better parent by staying strong yeah and setting you, those boundaries you say in the article you know set limits to their screen time and that's fine and i'm sure a lot of parents do that um keep an open door policy um when they're on their device devices this is something that's really important i think too um and in and better still restrict them to common areas where you can actually monitor their screen i think this is quite important don't you think so at least that way if they are sort of speaking um with the likes of Fortnite and those types of things to someone else online that you can at least hear what they're sort of saying also what do you what absolutely are your thoughts? I, but but I, well i have to say i just know that has become increasingly challenging for me so i think you know that was the advice we were getting 10 years ago when our kids may have been sitting at a big PC and you may have only had one computer um, for the family where they would potentially do some of their, their online work. But it, it is kids. becoming <laughs> much hard for kids um, as a, the, the access to, to phones and tablets. So just to give you an idea, in Australia, almost every single teenager in Australia has access to a phone or tablet. I would yeah. say in, in most cases it's a phone. Um, I think it's... Um, two thirds of primary school kids have access to their own device, tablet or, or, or smartphone, um, and one third of preschoolers. So um, because it's a handheld device, it is so much trickier than, than even a laptop for instance, because you, sometimes you can't even actually tell that they're they're on their device. Yeah. Um, so it's once again just being, um, you know, setting those boundaries, following through on those, and doing things like having a place where everyone keeps their phones or their tablets during certain, um, you know, periods of the day, so that you physically know that they're not in their room um, doing things that they shouldn't do. So um, the other thing that I, I say to parents is. As hard as it is, like quite often um, I've seen, I walk into a room and and you straight away you see your child change the screen, whether that's the tab that they're operating on or it's because they were supposed to be doing homework and in fact they were playing a game or they were on social media. But I actually call my kids out on that and I say, you know what, if you want access to, to technology, you are not allowed to do that. When I walk in the room, you are not allowed to change the screen that you are operating on. Um, Do you check your browser history then? Yep. So you can absolutely check their browser history, and it's it's and it's trust thing. So and and they, there's got to be consequences as well. So if they do that, and if they are accessing things that they shouldn't have been, and I have had experience of that. Um, uh, yeah, won't won't go, won't totally go into that story, but um, I had a child that was. Um, um, had gone against the the rules that we'd set for her, so mm -hmm. there had to be consequences. Um, and it's it's tough, but you've got to follow through with them because she was actually putting herself at in danger. She had she bent the rules, she'd interpreted them in a way that that she felt um, was okay. So this because I hadn't been really specific. Um, but, and, but I and, but I then had to take a stand and say well, because you've 
you've you've done this you now have you now lo losing technology you're not going to have access to your phone for this period of time um, so 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 given that you're an expert in this space you were able to pick up on that quite quickly but for a parent that is is a working parent's got a million other things happening which everyone does anyway how can they and this this is exactly what we're talking about how, how can parents can i guess it's, stay up to well, date with it because these things can happen yep. in the blink of an eye that's right and you know what rach there's no easy answer um and and i have to be honest with you it wasn't because um because someone else brought it to my attention um so this was to do with social media social media platform um and and we'd given permission for them to have an account but the account was um had to be private mm -hmm. So she was only allowed to have people that she physically knew connected to her on this account. Mm -hmm. So it had to be not even, you know, so-and-so's, yep. you know, friend, friend of a friend. It had to be people that they, she physically knew. But she actually decided to create some other accounts. Um, and so I, as far as I was aware, I, I could check that, that account that I felt, thought that she was accessing, but I wasn't aware of these other accounts. And it was only through someone else telling me yes. um, that I became aware of it. So I'm not going to sit here and say that it was because I was doing such a brilliant job. Um, because unfortunately, if kids want to if kids want to get around the rules, they can't. Yeah. Um, and they normally know more than us about how to do that and how to go about it. Um, which right, probably brings me. It? it is, and then that just brings you back to I always whenever I give a workshop. Um, on body safety and, and having those conversations with your kids. I, I finish off by talking about the importance of having just um, a relationship with your child where they feel connected to you, where yeah. they feel like you're available to them. And, you know, you can only do your best, but I think, you know, keeping that in mind as, as well is important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just trying to keep open dialogue, check as much as you can, but particularly, I mean, that's, as I said, it's, there's a whole range of different issues on this topic, um, particularly depending on what age yep. your children are. Um, and and but, you know, controls as well. So ensure that you yeah, so, 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 yep, so we've said A is for awareness, B is for setting those boundaries and, and, and sticking to them. Um, and just to finish off on that, um, the final thing as well is I think um, you've really got to demonstrate boundaries your own personal boundaries to your child. If you're going to expect your kids to limit their time screen, um, in particular, um, there's no point. You really need to be demonstrating that yep. as a parent. For the next two hours, yep. and yeah, you can't be on yours, but I can be on mine. <laughs> exactly. Thing, exactly. Example. Yeah, and then that um, leads us to C, which is for controls, which mm -hmm. is where we can actually um, physically change the technology, change the restrictions on there and the controls on there to help protect our kids. And I can't um, recommend it enough, but the eSafety um, website, um, government website is fantastic. It has lots and lots of um, information on there that will help parents we'll have through. Um, no notes. Yeah, and the links on the article as well. We can, um, yeah, you can, if you can pop it on, that'd be great. And they've also got, um, so they've got it for um, for sort of older children, but they've also got um, a booklet, which is um, for early years as well. So I'll just mention that because mm. um, I think, you know, some of the issues we're talking about have, has been for, um, you know, probably primary school and above, but there's still things that you can do in those early years and, mm -hmm. um, and for, for that age group, you, all you have to do is um, pop on the website and they will send that out to you for free, which I think is a, a wonderful initiative um, for, for, for parents or for, by the government for parents mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we, we need as much help as we can get. Um, so in terms of um, the controls, so we can, um, the eSafety the e website talks about, um, there's an article there, Taming Technology, and that's one of the links that I've got in there. And, and that will actually talk you through the way of um, the sort of controls and restrictions that you can put in place. Great. I mentioned before, particularly with social media, um, the fact, knowing and once again, understanding how technology works, but the difference between... Uh, private account and a public account is enormous yes. um, for our 
for our young, particularly teenagers, um, because one is essentially a closed group where they're protected by just the people within that group. And even then, we, we touched on um, cyberbullying before, you know, there can still be, um, there can still be risks within that group. But uh, when we're looking at public accounts, um, it is an entirely different story. So um, you need to become aware of what the difference is. And so just saying yes to a particular platform or technology for your child isn't enough. You actually have to acquaint yourself with um, the different options within that app or that game um, or even that toy. Um, one thing as I was doing the research for this, um, the, I'd never really thought about it, and I think maybe because my, my children are just a little bit older, um, but just the, the number of um, smart toys um, yes. yep. came, came through, where I'd never even considered that before, where you may set up a, um, might be something robotic or where it's controlled by the iPad or there's all sorts of games or smart watches or, um, or the, you know, they're handheld devices that could be... Um, have sort of GPS tracking on it where it could actually be um, allowing um, a predator to yeah. know what area. Yeah, yeah and the location. Where they are. Mm -hmm. That's right, their location, yep. And it's sort of personal details. So, you know, to have set up the, the toy, it may have said, you know, what are the, what's their names? Um, you know, what are, the, what are your children's names? Or, or, or again, the address details. And if they can hack into that information, then that can be, it can be very scary as well. Yeah. Um, so, and I think the other thing that we've done recently, um, which again is we we had hoped that by putting the controls or and setting those those boundaries for our kids that they would respect um, those um, limitations, but we actually had to go. Well, you know what? They're not adhering to what what those rules are, and so we looked at our Wi-Fi settings and we have actually had to restrict those Wi-Fi settings, um, which depending on who you're with, who your provider is, um, but I think most of them now have that opportunity where you can actually limit the internet access. And I mean, that's, that's the key in all of this, isn't it, Rach? It's, yeah. it's really, it's anything, it's where that, that connection is to the internet. Um, that's, that's, that's the door. Mm -hmm. that's, that's opening up the dangers to our kids. So um, we now have, set limits on devices um, that turn the, the, the Wi-Fi off for that particular device and that particular child um, much earlier in the day so that, um, you know, if they are in, a do in, in the room with a closed door, at least I know, well, they can't be accessing the internet because we've put those controls in place. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And have you got any stories that illustrate, I guess, the dangers and consequences at all? Well, you've shared sort of one with us, which is... Um Thank you for sharing that. Um, do you have any others at all? Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, some of you may have remembered this if, if you've heard me speak before just on the, the body safety issue, but we had that one little boy, um, like my whole journey started with, with um, hearing about these particular stories. And in, in this one case, um, we had a seven-year-old who had been touched inappropriately by the other seven-year-old. And um, when the mother contacted the other boy, sorry, contacted the other boy's mum, she then revealed to her friend that they had actually um, discovered their seven-year-old accessing pornography on his iPad several months prior. As a seven-year-old? As, as a seven-year-old, correct. So they hadn't um, oh put the, those controls in place. Um, How would they even know to do that, though? Like, Well, yeah, that's the thing. I... Um, so I've got another example, so I'll sort of weave that into this one. We had a case, and it was several years ago now, um, and it was at a, um, I heard about it at a school. The kids were Googling something as innocent as baby doing a poo was what they thought would be funny. Mm -hmm. But the, the way that these um, websites are set, they are set up to target essentially new customers. And so, and, and also, you know, I know that often I've heard about on church websites, they'll, the pop-ups will come up where they, where they target people who may be vulnerable and they do this with children as well. So where there might be a, a particular search that, that, that might seem funny for children, 
when they Googled on that, there was then the option to click on something else and one thing led to another. And from that, that innocent search, um, they were then led on to um, inappropriate material. Um, and that's the essentially what happened with this. The whole time, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. So with that seven-year-old, obviously the, the controls weren't in place and the awareness wasn't there. So mm -hmm. the parents, um, you know, weren't monitoring him. Um, and the scary part was that it was over a period of weeks that he was accessing this material. But even at seven, the way that um, inappropriate material works is essentially it, 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 it ups the ante each time. Um, and so in that time, he had essentially, they said, almost become addicted to what he was viewing. Um, As a and this seven is at seven. Old. Um, and, and obviously those, those parents did everything they could at that time to then obviously ensure that he couldn't access that material, but they weren't aware that he was acting out because of what he'd been exposed to. Um, and he was then putting other, other kids at risk. So um, that's just one example. Um, and I mentioned before about the dangers of, um, of the private versus public accounts with social media. Um, I had a, a personal friend who shared this story with me and I'm sure they won't mind me um, telling you because it is, I think it, it's so important when we hear about these act, things actually happening in real life, I think they, they, they put a whole new meaning on things. Mm -hmm. And their teenage daughter um, had been on a social media network, I think it was Instagram. And again, the agreement had been that it would be a uh, private account. And she had decided to, or, and against uh, her parents' wishes, it had changed it to a public account. Now, I think when they looked back on it, it had only been maybe, it was got a number, two months at the most. It was like eight weeks, two months. And even in that time, that was enough time for someone to come along and start grooming her so when I heard that just the fact that within that short period of time of going from a private account to a public account that she actually had a really horrendous experience of being groomed now she recognized the behavior as inappropriate um, and we're talking about a, a 13 year old but she knew that she changed the account when she shouldn't have. So she didn't alert her parents to the fact of what was going on. And while she was, um, she wasn't encouraging what was happening, but because she was responding to this, this person who was um, being extremely um, forthright in the way that, that they were talking to her, um, they certainly weren't hiding what they were about just the fact that she was trying to deal with it on her own and say, don't contact me, you're, you're a weirdo, you're, you're a dirty old man, why are you telling me these things? That was enough to encourage him. And so it was only when her mother picked up her phone and saw a message that she wouldn't even repeat to me, right? Um, and she knows what I do for a living. Yeah. And so, you know, people are often, you know, will come and share with me their experiences because they know that I, you know, I am someone that they can talk to me about it. Yes. But the friend said to me, I cannot repeat to you, Michelle, the words that he was saying to my daughter. Um, it was Terrific. that horrendous. So um, that was a really good wake up call for me as well. Just to, But the child to, knew that she was doing the wrong thing the whole time and which is really sort of sparked it at the, end, at, at the start by the sounds of things because she didn't, admit to her parents. Well, she wanted a public, yeah, she wanted the, the public account and, and it's, it's, it all comes back down to peer pressure and these influences that they will see on, on Instagram that have so many hundred thousand followers and it's quite amazing. They, they, they can be another 14 year old girl or boy who have suddenly done something that has made them a, a superstar, made them an influencer on, on Instagram and they've got all these followers. And so, you know, that's kind of like a sense the of new power that they have that people, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And to aspire to those. So there's a whole lot of peer pressure as well in the way that you 
um, our young people um, interact on on social media. So I think you know that was probably the the reason why she switched her account. Um, and you know it's all about the number of likes and you know posting those videos or those photos and, and well, wanting that validation out that it gives you. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. So yeah, they're just a few examples of 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 pretty much all of those people that I've mentioned, except for that um, first story, but it was a friend of a friend. They're all um, people that I know within um, my, my circle of, of friends, essentially. And as a parent, it must have been um, so alarming for her to find that on her daughter's phone then. So, I mean, how do you even sort of navigate your way out of that situation then? Yeah, yeah. She, um, one, one mistake she did make, well, it's not necessarily a mistake, but she contacted straight away the the social um platform and told them what was going on and so they removed that profile immediately they they blocked him and and cancelled his account um but at the time i said to her if she'd gone to the police first they may have advised her differently um and it, and it's whether or not as a parent you want to go down that track but um, there's also the opportunity for them to follow through with um, with that particular um, predator. So, so it, does it really yeah, start with having a conversation with your children to to uh, uh, let them know that these things are out there and that they can happen? So, God forbid that they were to do something like this without a parent knowing. At least that they would then be aware and and, and know. Well, this is this is wrong, and I should stop doing this immediately. Like I'm just, you know, going back to yeah, what I think the start of the chat. Yeah, it's, that's right, which is awareness. Awareness for them and awareness for us and having those conversations. And it's also about, I think, we have a lot of pressure on us as parents, you know, oh, well, you don't want to overstep the mark and, you know, your child's entitled to a certain amount of privacy. Mm. But at the same time, this is a whole new new world and sometimes it's it's actually important for us to like sort of almost lay the law down and say look you're going to have access to these but I also as your parent have the authority to check them when I need to and, yes. and knowing their passwords um you know they're not going to like you for it but um but but at the end of the day it's it's their safety that's paramount yeah um you know and as parents we often have to do make the tough decisions um for our children because we know what's best for them in the long run Yes. And overall, I guess with more time online, children could be exposed to, I guess, a new batch of like malware threats as well, because, you know, they are downloading a whole heap of new applications at the moment. And that's, I know that we're on the other side of lockdown now, but, you know, we are sort of, you know, well, now in the winter months and that sort of stuff with sort of, I guess, all, everyone being indoors more, and especially too, because kids don't necessarily have um, as many of their hobbies that they, they can to sort of, to keep them as, as busy and occupied. Um, and I know, I guess, a lot of these viruses and what they sort of call ransomware, like, um, you know, are accessible through like YouTube. Even YouTube kids have had some problems over the last few years, which we've known, and they've been a target um, for that sort of stuff. But have you had much of an experience with this? Um, or is it mainly just with the social platforms that you've, you've been aware of these problems personal stories yeah no i i have it not 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 in terms of kids being targeted um i have stories of of where it's been adults but obviously yeah that that threat is out there and once again um it's about being aware and and making sure that all your um protection is up to date um and it's it's amazing how quickly that comes around um those updates and sometimes it's quite easy to ignore them as well because yeah <laughs> of course. in a hurry we're and they pop like, up oh, and the they say oh, the update i'll just do that later do that later i need to do this thing online now <laughs> or whatever yep. you know but the other thing is too is i guess some households may be borrowing sort of um other computers or friends computers you know in a scenario like yourself where you've got four kids as well um you know that they at the time of homeschooling um, may have needed to sort of borrow, you know, these older computers that weren't necessarily up to date with up to date, yeah. viruses and those types of things um, and missing out on, on those types of things with that level of protection as well. So I think it's just more um, 
now, like I said, we're on the other side of it, but it's just more, I think, if we were ever to find ourselves in this, this situation again, that parents, yeah. I guess, should maybe just be aware that they at least should have their devices up to date with antivirus and those types of things as well, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And as I said to you, I, I, it's just my personal opinion, but I would, I strongly believe that a lot of those allowances that we may have made during COVID when it comes to technology, it's going to be really hard to wind them back um, when we've, we've given kids access, um, you know, to particularly new platforms or new yeah. apps or new games. I wonder, you know, how many parents will actually then be able to turn around to their kids and say, okay, COVID's over. We're now, we're going to delete those games or delete those apps, yeah. put on them. If they do it, I'm not, I'm not, that is the, the, the best way forward. But I think for many of us, the reality is, um, that once we've given access, it is very hard to, to wind things back. So, yeah. Um, I well, I mean, how, how do parents just sort of deal with that situation then? How do you, do you have any tips at all? Any advice? Um, I think it's about taking the time out um, as a parent, educating yourself, as I said, on, on what the risks are. Um, and I think the, the whole monitoring thing is really important. So if they are using those um, or accessing that technology in that way and it's appropriate and they are sticking to the limitations, um, then, you know, that, that could be something that you continue. But if, but if you really take the time out and go, okay, these are our expectations. They've got to be clear. Yeah. That's the thing. You almost need to write them out. Um, I, I love the idea of um, a contract um, for particularly my, my daughters where I've actually specified the, these are in black and white. These are our expectations. A contract, a written contract. A contract. Do you get yeah. them to sign so, it? <laughs> sorry? Do, do you get them to sign it and agree to it? Sign it. That's right. Because oh, my goodness. There's no ambiguity then as to, oh, but I thought you meant this. I thought you meant that. Or, you know, and, and that's when a really, you, if that's you a sit brilliant down. That's exercise for kids because, I mean, if they're ever going to sign any other agreements later on in their life, that they understand that, well, you know, what is stipulated in, in the terms of that contract, <laughs> they have to stick by them. It's not just, yep. that's, that's great. And, there, and there's consequences for that as well. So, you know, Good on you. in this instance, if, if, if these things aren't adhered to, this is what's going to happen. So there's no surprises. There's no shock and horror. I can't believe you've taken my phone off me for a week no. because it's, it's, it's written there, there in, in black and, and you've white. you signed and agree to it. That's um, awesome. And I've just learned that as a mum, I guess, just seeing the way that my kids have responded over time um, where they'll, you know, they get in trouble for something and they try to, you know, wiggle their way out of it essentially. And, and, quite often you don't realise that you're being manipulated as a parent until you went, hang on, no, that's wrong. I, you know, I should have stayed strong on that point. So what so, age did you uh, sort of implement that with your kids? How I, old I think were it's, they? Um, well, um, really teenagers. So, well, coming into year seven, so into those high school years. But I think yep. um, you could do it at, earlier and it just probably depends on, for me, I guess. The child. Um, yeah. So, and again, Nowadays, kids are accessing technology so much more than what my girls were um, sort of. So there's 10 years between my eldest and my youngest. So I can see, put it this way, with my youngest, the contract will be coming in a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I love that. But, yeah, just to have really and, – and you know what else you can get them to do is to participate in that. So – for them also in the creation of the contact the, the contract in the creation of it nice. so it's not just not just about collaborative collaborative exactly it's not just about you setting the the rules you can say to them well, well what other expectations do you think are fair um and it's a really good idea if you do it before <laughs> before you grant access to whatever it is so um with the whole Mobile, mobile phone, um, smartphone. This was one of the things that we did before they got the phone. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And as you say, it's, it's, it's a good practice for, for later on in life as well when, um, you know, when they're accountable yes. um, for their actions. So, well, look, um, if, um, and God forbid any child was being targeted, I guess, by an online predator, um, what behaviours do you think parents would typically see or what changes? Uh, would they see in the child and what should they do about it? Look, I think 
the, 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 the really red flag stuff is changes in um, a child's language um, or behaviour um, in terms of sexual behaviour and language. Um, so if you see them, you know, um, saying thing, hear them saying things or see them doing things um, that are not normal for your child, um, then that can be quite a, a big red flag um, yeah. that something's changed for them and that they've been exposed to something that um, perhaps that they shouldn't have. Um, so obviously changes that sort of, you know, very much in line with if, if they're being targeted by some bisexual predator. Um, yeah. But then also just changes. Once I always say to people, it's about knowing your child, what's normal for your child, but it's just yes. in terms of their anxiety levels and, and what's normal for them in terms of, um, you know, their moods and um, their sleep patterns. Um, so when you see, you know, if they be become really irritable um, or, you know, it's recognising those signs and just thinking, I wonder if, you know, is there anything else that could be happening in their lives that are, are prompting um, those behaviours? But as I said, the, the changes in, in their sexual attitudes, um, language and 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 physical behaviours. And what ages um, are you are sort of real. suggesting that these changes can and have sort of taken place as early as um, what age? Well, it depends what they've been exposed to, but yeah, it can be from a really young age. Um, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot of stories lately um, in my work with the book, just the number of um, young children that are um, being exposed to inappropriate behaviour by their peers. And I know we've, we've talked about this before, but just in the last month, the number of people that I've been in contact with, where we're talking about preschoolers um, and we're talking about behaviour that no, no preschooler um, is able to, to come up with themselves. So they've either, they're either been exposed to that behaviour themselves physically or um, in some cases it could be that they've come across um, inappropriate material. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it can be from, from a very young age, mm -hmm. which is just oh, tremendous. Just, well, look, you've given us some really... Um incredible information today if you were to summarize i guess your key points for anyone watching and listening what would they be look i just think um make it a priority um and i think it's if you um just remember those abcs that you've got to cover it from all angles there's no point just having the controls in place and not being aware of what um you know your kids are actually doing um and again you know putting being aware of what they're doing um, but but giving them free reign, that's not going to work either. So it's about those three things working um, to complement each other. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just thinking of being aware, setting those boundaries and making sure that the actual controls are in place. Mm -hmm. And there's the um, e-safety e website, which you mentioned before, which will have a link in the show yeah, notes fabulous. too. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's the information is out there. So it's really only about you finding the time and making it a priority. Um, they're the only blockages there because the information, um, as I said, the government's done a wonderful job of providing um, really specific tools to help us on that journey. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the whole reason you created the book was to make this conversation about this sort of stuff easier between parents and children. Um, and as I said at the start of the chat, you know, um, Only For Me is a gentle rhyming book, which does sort of give parents a, an easier um, sort of opportunity to have that conversation. But um, for, for the moment, you've also sort of got a, um, an offer for, for parents as well. Is that right? That's right. So it was really, I just meant, you know, talked about the, the handbook that's been circulating the dark web. And so, um, you know, just as a, as an advocate, I just really wanted to do something to try and um, counteract that, that evil essentially. And so um, I've got a collection of articles called the Safe Kids series, and that talks parents and carers and educators um, through the topic of, of body safety. Um, and it's normally available, um, well, it's, to, to, it's um, retails at $14.95 um, or 
you can buy it as a package um, with a copy of Only For Me, but I decided that during this COVID lockdown period that I just wanted to give that away for free. So um, if anyone does head to my website, which is onlyforme.com.au, um, and you click on the Safe Kids series, it will give you the coupon code right there, um, which you just pop in, and it will ask you for some um, um, details, so your email address um, and, and your address, but there'll be no payment. Um, gateway that will pop up. So when you then get an automatic email that will then give you that um, access to that digital um, resource. That's wonderful. And we've got that code um, in the article and we'll have that also in the show notes as well. So yeah. yeah. Well, um, this is this has been a wonderful chat. Um, not for any other reason, but that, that, that we just hopefully have helped as many families as possible. It's a really hard subject to talk about, as we've said in all of our other previous chats, but it's, it's one that needs to be had and more of it. So um, thank you so much for your time. And if parents have got any other questions um, and want to contact you directly, whereabouts can they find you? Absolutely. So um, if they jump on the website or email me directly, which is contact at onlyforme.com.au. Wonderful. Thanks, Michelle. We'll speak. Um, yeah, and yeah. I've actually got, yeah, sorry, I'll just um, give a little plug. I'm, I'm doing some women uh, with the COVID-19. Um, I often run parent workshops through um, schools or preschools, churches, um, any organisations essentially where I can get a, a group of um, parents together. Um, but obviously I'm not able to book those in at the moment. And so I started my um, my first webinar last Thursday, oh, which went really well. Know. And so, yeah, so we've got another one booked in and I'll be doing those um, on a fairly regular basis, certainly while um, I'm unable to, to, to speak face to face. Um, so that's just another opportunity um, for parents if they want to know more. And they go directly to your website to find that information then? Um, not on the um website but if they go to the facebook my facebook page um they will be able to keep up to date with the latest um event or webinar okay great we'll make sure we'll get a link to your facebook page as well in the notes love love the chat let's awesome. um yeah we'll chat again soon as we said this is something that we need to keep speaking about so and more of it so we'll take care give my thanks, love to right. our kids you and too we'll speak soon okay bye. see you later thanks bye-bye